Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. Nice to see you all. I see familiar alumni and faculty and staff faces. Great to see you all. Thank you. Just going to give it a minute to have everyone join us. So is it okay to have the video up or like we should just have the audio up? Um, I'm going to ask everyone to um, be on mute throughout the duration of the event. And it's up to you whether you want to leave your video on or not. Um, I usually make weird faces when I'm watching, so that's totally <laughs> up to you. <laughs> All right, so as we give the last remaining folks a chance to join us, I'm going to go ahead and start. So welcome everyone to our virtual alumni event today called What's Happening at Florida Tech. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jillian LeClaire and I work for the Florida Tech Office of Alumni Affairs here in Melbourne, Florida. I'm excited to partner today with Florida Tech's Chief of Staff and Vice President of Communications, Dr. Wes Sumner, to bring our alumni all over the world a spring 2021 university update. And this is the first of its kind. We've never done this event before. So I hope you all enjoy it and uh, feel free to email me after the event and, and give us some feedback. And um, if you like it, we can talk about doing it uh, in the future. We have some time reserved at the end of the presentation for your questions, but if you uh, think of something during the talk, you wanna put it in the chat box, feel free to do that whenever. And then uh, Dr. Sumner or I can answer them at the end. And then, as I said, uh, please leave your microphone on mute throughout the duration. It just helps cut back on all of uh, that pesky background noise. We really appreciate that. So to get a better idea of who's joining us today, I'm going to launch a quick poll so please take a second to fill this out. We got 50% of the votes in, so I'll just give it another 10 seconds, I'll say. Hi, Kendall, good to see you. Julian, right. you, could, you could have put a, a listing there for the Brevard County or uh, Melbourne, Bombay area, also on the uh, location. Yeah, I just did Florida. Um, oh, then I voted wrong. I said East U.S. Oh, skipped right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I have they changed 80... me to Florida since I live in West Melbourne. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have 81% voted, so I'll give you five more seconds for those folks just finishing up here. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we're going to end the polling. So let's see, when did you graduate from Florida Tech? We have a couple from the first decade or so, um, or one, one person. Um, we have seven from the 70s. We have six attendees from the 80s, four from the 90s, six from the 2000s, six from the 2010s, so pretty evenly dispersed. And then we have a lot of faculty and staff joining us, as well as uh, community members and friends of Florida Tech. So welcome, everybody. Appreciate you joining us. And then what fields did you study? We have the majority of business grads with us today. And then uh, about the same for engineering and science. Just one uh, COPLA student. Um, and then a few for aviation. So this is what I really want to know. How long has it been since you last visited the Melbourne campus? So about 50% said less than a year ago. So you may know a lot of the things going on in terms of the, the buildings and things like that, but I'm sure there's a lot of other things internally that you're going to be excited to find out. Uh, we have 20% who 
have been here between the last one and three years and then kind of evenly dispersed. And we have two folks who haven't been here in over 30 years. So there'll be lots for you to learn and three people who have never visited. So maybe you're an online student or just a, a community member. So um, looking forward to filling you guys all in. And where do you currently live? We have 62% in Florida, 21% on the East Coast, 6% US Central, 9% West Coast, and a few international. So thank you all for joining us again. That's very helpful to kind of see who our audience is today. So now to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Wes Sumner joined Florida Institute of Technology in 2009 and currently serves, as I said previously, as Chief of Staff and VP for Communications. In addition to acting as our university spokesperson, he oversees the communications office, our creative services office, and our public radio station, WFIT. Before joining Florida Tech, he was director of district communications and public information for Brevard Public Schools, one of the largest school districts in the state of Florida. He managed all primary communication functions, including media relations, crisis communications, the district television station and nonprofit foundation. He also asked, acted as their district spokesperson. Prior to his work at Brevard Public Schools, he spent a decade working for the University System of Georgia. Most recently, he served as Georgia Southwestern State University, where he led a variety of communication management efforts. And his early career included other communications positions in academia at Georgia Southern University and Valdosta State University. He also logged many hours on TV, radio, newspaper, and video production, having worked as a print and broadcast journalist. Uh, Dr. Sumner earned a Bachelor of Arts degree, double majoring in journalism and political science at UCF, a Master of Education degree in educational leadership from Valdosta State University, and then a Doctor of Business Administration here from Florida Tech. He's also a graduate of Leadership Brevard Class of 2008 and the recipient of several Council for the Advancement and Support of Education, also known as CASE, Awards for Excellence in Programs, Publishing, and Media Relations. Wes and his family reside in Titusville, Florida, where he grew up and was an honor graduate at Astronaut High School. He and his wife, Rachel, have twin children, Sarah Grace and Jonah. So now that we are properly acquainted with Dr. Sumner, I will turn it over to him. Well, Jillian, thank you for that very kind introduction and good afternoon, everyone. Really appreciate you taking an hour or so out uh, today to find out what's going on with your favorite university, my favorite university, Florida Institute of Technology. I wanna also thank the Alumni Association, Bino, and the entire team here in the Alumni House where I am safely ensconced uh, this afternoon for our time together. Uh, quick side note, I also taught in this classroom. I'm an adjunct instructor for the Biz College of Business. And so I was in this space uh, every week for 16 weeks for the spring semester, talking to students remotely over Zoom. I love this backdrop. What a great representation of the history of Florida Tech. And we're going to talk about the new Alumni Center here coming up in just a couple of moments. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm humbled to be able to share a bit of information with you about that. And hopefully you're going to be able to come out sometime in the near future if you haven't seen the Alumni Center and, and take a gander at it. Uh, Bino and the team have done a tremendous job of making a, a warm and welcoming place for all of our alumni and, and friends of the university. Okay, well, let me go ahead and bring up my slides that I'm gonna be sharing with you here today. Got a couple of slides for you, as well as we're gonna be looking at some video clips too. Uh, and that will sort of break things up from you having to see me the entire time. We're gonna talk about what's happening at Florida Tech for uh, spring, summer of 2021. And we're gonna look a little bit into the future fall of 21 into the 21-22 academic year. Of course, it, it goes without saying, uh, we've all been affected the last 16 months or so by COVID-19. It's changed our daily lives uh, in, in ways that I, I feel personally, we won't probably fully understand for many years to come. But our theme here at Florida Tech, as set by our president, Dr. McKay, our provost, Dr. Marco Carvalho, is really perseverance. You've seen that uh, if you see the alumni magazine, we had a cover story about how the university has really persevered over the last year plus. We have an outstanding board of trustees at Florida Tech that helps give us guidance and outside uh, business expertise. And they have been a tremendous partner 
uh, with our senior administration. And then of course, it all also comes down to our faculty and staff, right? We have a faculty who has just gone above and beyond over the last year plus to be able to bring quality instruction to our students in new, in new ways, in new formats. And so we're gonna talk more about all of that here as we, as we go through. You know, we, we did a number of things to keep our students safe here at Florida Tech. And that started really with President McKay charging a, uh, a panel, if you will, a task force, our pandemic response team, which was a group led by Bino Campanini to bring together administrators and staff folks to really plan. And so it's been iterative planning since the pandemic first hit us all uh, early last spring in 2020. A number of steps that were taken and, and almost immediately what we did was really look at what can we do to deliver instruction, quality instruction to our students in ways that students can have that experience but also stay safe. How can we keep our faculty and staff safe as well? So we did shift to remote learning in terms of taking our classes all online. And President McKay tells the story uh, led by Marco Carvalho and, and our faculty teams and our folks in IT. We did that whole process in about two weeks to take every single Florida Tech class that was in person and put it online. Uh, we also took steps like restricting public access to campus. If you've been on our campus before, you know that we have a beautiful 130 acres here in Melbourne and we welcome folks all the time. But we had to take steps as other places had to take steps to close our botanical gardens to the public, to uh, close our dining hall and our athletic facility to any folks outside of the university community. And we took all of those decisions very seriously. They were informed by the research that we collected through the PRT. They were informed by what we saw other institutions doing and not doing. And of course, CDC guidance, Brevard County Health Department guidance is always what we were, what we were looking at. You know, and Jillian mentioned at the beginning, uh, as a former employee of the University System of Georgia, you know, when you're one of 35 institutions, you get told what to do. When you're an independent technological university like Florida Tech, uh, you, you need to decide and you need to bring the best information to bear that you can to be able to make those decisions to keep everyone safe. And that was always the approach that Dr. McKay and, and our leadership took when, when we were making those decisions. And as we continue to make those decisions that we're gonna talk about here coming up through the summer as we look toward fall. Uh, you know, we, we look at data from other institutions about their infection rates, and we had self-reporting going on at Florida Tech. Every day, faculty, staff, and students have been and continue to be asked to hit a button on an app and let us know how you're feeling. And if you have any kinds of symptoms or, or certainly if you test positive, then you were asked to uh, let us know so that we could make appropriate arrangements for you. And uh, Krishna Patel and Bino's team did a wonderful job working with our other pieces, parts of campus to be able to help those students. And we only, only, uh, it, it's any number at, above zero is too high, but we ended up with about 290 cases. And out of a campus community, all told of faculty, staff, and students of around 10,000, our numbers were significantly lower than other institutions uh, that, that we looked at. For instance, University of Tampa reported uh, well over a thousand cases. Uh, during, during that period of time. So uh, we're very grateful that we did not have uh, higher numbers on campus. And so we keep a watchful eye on those numbers. We have a dashboard on our website that was created that you can get to straight off the page. And you'll see all of our numbers compiled there. And if you haven't taken a look, I would, I would, encourage, you, uh, would encourage you to do so. The return to in-person instruction in fall of 21 is what we have announced that we are striving for and our pandemic response team and our folks are making plans over the summer to be able to deliver that return to in-person instruction. You know, that's really at the heart of the Florida Tech experience, the ability to be able to work inside labs and, 
have classes in person with faculty who are so well respected in their field and who can give our students hands on experience, particularly in engineering and science. And so as soon as we can safely return to that model, we will. You know, we've, we've uh, taken a host of other steps from social distancing to promoting hand washing to masks uh, over the past 16 months. And we're evaluating which of those, uh, those kinds of precautions will also be in place in the fall. And we'll be announcing more of those details as we have them over the summer and as we prepare for an August return to uh, in-person instruction. I want to talk for a moment about athletics. You know, it, it of course, uh, the pandemic had a major response on collegiate athletics at every level in this country and beyond. We suspended all of our athletic activities in March of 2020. We resumed competition in January of this year, but uh, Sunshine State Conference institutions played only a conference schedule. We had though, despite the restraints and all of the scheduling challenges, we had every eligible Florida Tech sport competing this spring with 133 athletic events taking place. And so we, we have our hats off to our athletic staff, our coaches, and certainly our student athletes for all of their work. Now, we were not able to have spectators uh, for I think practically any of that, but our students got to compete. And after a year of not competing, we were certainly glad that they were able to do that. Our women's rowing won the 2021 Sunshine State Conference Championship and now has won, believe it or not, four consecutive conference titles. And that has been something quite significant as well. Uh, our Florida Tech, uh, Florida Tech Athletics underwent a nice upgrade in 2020 too with a new varsity court design on the basketball court in the Charles and Ruth Clemente Center. This was the first redesign. You see that picture in the lower right-hand corner of our uh, basketball court since 2009. So it honors the heritage of the Space Coast and you see the silhouette of a space shuttle uh, on, the, on the screen there. So we were excited about that too. All right, let's move on into some campus updates and information. So here we are at the Foliard Alumni Center. What a, a beautiful facility, net zero energy, modern aesthetics. We have our alumni affairs offices here, conference room where I'm sitting, a solar array, and uh, word is an outdoor terrace is coming soon here at the Alumni Center. You know, this has been a collaboration between the state, between Panther alumni, between alumni affairs, uh, and it really is a beautiful, a beautiful space. Look for a full feature story on the cover of the upcoming Florida Tech Alumni Magazine that we're going to be getting out shortly. So uh, you'll be able to read all much more uh, about it there. We think that the Alumni Center is gonna be a great outreach opportunity uh, for K-12 students, local municipalities, because it, it gives a research opportunity, the way that the, uh, the structure was designed here to be able to do that particularly as it relates to energy conservation. And so as we do with so many initiatives here on campus, any research that we conduct related to the Alumni Center and its energy conservation steps that it has taken, uh, we'll be able to share that with the Florida Office of Energy and others and really highlight the, uh, the effectiveness of sustainable building practices, so important here in the 21st century. We received as a university a Silver Stars rating for this project, including the Foley Art Alumni Center and we're currently raising funds to apply for Leeds Gold certification of the center, which is another nice accolade to be able to have. So do look uh, next month for your Florida Tech Magazine edition, where we'll have much more, including some, some beautiful photographs of the interior and exterior here of the Alumni Center. So another uh, piece that we wanna talk about is a change that we made in our dining on campus, of course, we're also famous for just some great food at Florida Tech. We have an in-house culinary staff and have for many, many years, and, and they work out of Panther Dining. But we were able to adjust our Panther food court over the last year to be more of a space for, um, for retail type, if you will, food services. And this is something that student affairs and the administration, student government, 
I uh, had been hearing for a while that students were interested in some other options for food service. And so we have that now with Firehouse Subs, Einstein Bagels and Cosmic Creamery coming to campus. And actually Einstein Brothers Bagels opened here a few weeks ago. Uh, I will admit I've had a bagel or two from there and enjoyed it very much. Uh, it is dangerously close to my office. So that uh, presents other challenges for me. Uh, Firehouse Subs and Cosmic Creamery will be opening uh, later this summer and I'll be in serious trouble when that happens. Uh, but do come in and check it out uh, uh, here as we open up the campus in coming months and you are able to, to visit us. Uh, remember to take a stop in the Panther Food Court. It's over in what was the sub cafe on the first floor of the Denius Student Center. Let's talk about Florida Tech eSports for a moment. And uh, we've had several senior administrators, including uh, Bino and our, our Emeritus uh, Athletics Director, Bill Jurgens, and others uh, involved in the creation of, of this eSports and researching eSports. And so, you know, we've had this in the planning stages for, for quite a while because this was another item that our students expressed deep and abiding interest in. The whole esports and gaming uh, realm has really exploded in the last few years, and it is a varsity sport at an increasing number of colleges and universities. And so it's, it's a new kind of athletics, if you will. Given the science and technology focus, the STEM impetus of a university like Florida Tech, given the interests of our student body, it made really good sense for Florida Tech to be able to field an esports program. And we've hired Dana Hustet uh, to join us as director. She's gotten some local attention here in, in local media coming on board. And this, it's, it's important to understand this is more than, uh, this is not your, your, your daddy's or your granddaddy's video arcade. And I'll just say that very plainly. This isn't Pac-Man and Galaga uh, that I still love. Uh, this is highly organized, highly specialized uh, gaming that students take part in individually or as a team and compete collegiately with other institutions. It's a, it's, uh, if you've ever been on YouTube or your kids or grandkids have been on YouTube, you can watch some of these sporting events on other platforms as well. There is advertising, there are sponsors uh, like you would see in professional athletics uh, in some cases for this kind of thing. And there are great honors, including cash awards, to be won for students and for schools. So it's quite an interesting area. Uh, what you see here in this picture is a conceptualization of, of how our uh, space might look. Uh, this is uh, still in the planning stages, but this is what a competitive space in another location looks like. And so we're looking uh, to build out our esports arena, they're called, our gaming arena, uh, very similarly with uh, most appropriate equipment, um, screens, computers, chairs, the whole nine yards for the esports uh, team. And look for much more activity there this fall, August of this year. Let's move and talk about our Health Sciences Research Center or biomedical uh, facility that we dedicated uh, last year here at you know, in addition to programs like esports, it's important for us to really be forward looking for what's coming around the corner for job opportunities for our students, for research opportunities for our students and our faculty, and how Florida Tech can fill the needs that we need to fill, that we were built to fill across a number of fronts. And in, in this day and age, in the wake of COVID-19, Biomedical makes really good sense. We're looking uh, statistically at, at a surge in need for biomedical related applicants for jobs uh, in coming years. So you're looking at a three story, what will be a brick clad building on the South campus, uh, right uh, in the Olin quad area. It was in that green space that was always perfect for a building that a building had been intended to go now for over 20 years that we have been able to create. 61,000 square feet, more than a third of that is labs, classrooms, training space, other equipment spaces. And we're hoping to have completion of construction by December of this year. 
meaning that we could utilize it as early as spring of 22, perhaps for certain activities. It's gonna allow us to double the size of the undergraduate biomed engineering program to 300 full-time on-campus students and we'll be able to increase the size of the undergraduate pre-med program from 150 to 250 full-time on-campus students. It really is a wonderful opportunity for our students and, and a great chance for us to have some, some new space and, and partner with the community as well uh, to do research, to do other training opportunities that may come to pass. We're looking at uh, specialty equipment, including highly specialized uh, microscopes and spectrometers, virtual dissection tables are gonna be in this space, a tissue fatigue testing machine, high performance modeling, all kinds of simulation software. Um, the president uh, spoke uh, at length uh, at the dedication ceremony last year, just about how this is really going to allow us to engage on a whole new number of fronts with what we do best, which, which, is, uh, which is research and giving students that hands-on experience to be successful in their careers. Another initiative that has come forward here at Florida Tech is as we are always evaluating our course offerings to make sure that they reflect not only the foundational curricula of who we are as a STEM university, but also provide us for opportunities so that students can have a deepening understanding of the world around them. So our African-American Studies Initiative is in full swing. Uh, we are using a modern African-American Studies curriculum and it's gonna be taught by African Studies scholar, Don Harrell here on campus. It's the cornerstone of a new minor that we're developing that will strengthen and enhance our humanities curriculum. There are gonna be interdisciplinary courses in this program and it's going to help our students as we educate them to be good global citizens with new perspectives on social, political, economic, and cultural forces that are impacting the lives of black people in the US and those beyond as well. So we're excited that this is an important uh, enrichment to our curriculum and that it will be in place very soon. So what you always have to do if you want folks to know how good you really are as an institution is continually market yourself. And you do that from a number of perspectives. And we have a robust marketing program here at the university. Beyond the good word of mouth that Florida Tech has gotten for decades, there's an opportunity to do some, some paid media as well, as we call it uh, in the biz for the university. So we're gonna show you a couple of examples of some things that are rising at a local level and at a national level and beyond. Uh, we are going to uh, share with you next uh, a video that we are currently showing on Amazon Prime. Florida Tech is part of the Amazon Prime College Tour and proud to be a part of that. And so we've got in this video that you can watch on Amazon, the full version of it, you can hear stories from 10 Florida Tech students who show what it's truly like to, to be a student on campus. They talk about academics and athletics, and they even take a trip to the beach. Uh, but let's take a little tease here with the video, and we'll come back on the other side. Welcome to Florida Tech. In Melbourne, Florida, this is the college tour. We're streaming now on Amazon Prime. So that was the, the teaser video, but it's about a 30 minute show. If you wanna check it out, you can go to Am Amazon Prime uh, on your streaming service, Apple TV or however you, Roku, however you stream Amazon Prime, and you can search for the college tour and you will see the Florida Tech episode, or you can go to www.thecollegetour.com and also access it that way. So we really hope that is going to be visibility for the university nationally and beyond. And we really hope that the way that was structured in our partnership with Amazon, for that to be a very authentic kind of telling. You know, having done this for a, a little while, uh, we can do glossy admissions videos all day long. And there are places and people who, who need to see those. But what our research shows and what the best thinking is on 16, 17, 18 year olds, 
They really want to hear from their peers. They really want to be able to visualize themselves in a space. Yes, they want to hear about career outcomes. Yes, they want to hear about how professors work with them. Those are all important pieces, but they really want that first person kind of connection. So we feel like this Amazon Prime video is a great jumping off point to hopefully get students to want to come take a look for themselves. Join us on a tour, visit with their families. And um, we have under restrictions, we have been doing tours again now for a while, and we're going to uh, continue to very closely have those kinds of experiences, campus tours and the rest, just such an important part of understanding what Florida Tech education can do for our young people. Next up is a local video campaign, marketing campaign. We call it the Florida Tech Stands For campaign. And it was inspired by our brand, a brand platform that we introduced two years ago, the Relentless Pursuit of Greatness. It's about the things that we do best. And it's these short video commercials that you'll see across cable. You will have, if you're in Brevard County, you will have perhaps seen some of the billboards. We're doing some social media. The strength is really the focus on research and industry connections, our aerospace connections, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, ocean and marine, as well as biomed and health. What does Florida Tech do well? And how can Florida Tech benefit the local community by continuing to do it well? So let's take a look at one of those spots. Florida Institute of Technology. Well, let's try again. Florida Institute of Technology treasures its home near the Indian River Lagoon in Atlantic Ocean. Seawater flows through our veins. Through in-depth marine research, we make waves. Having Florida Tech as part of our community allows us to do world-class research along the Indian River Lagoon. The best place put the Florida Institute of Technology. It's the Space Coast here in Melbourne, Florida. Our work and the local environment go hand in hand. Florida Tech stands for Marine Science and Ocean Engineering. Florida Tech stands for the Space Coast. And you saw Dr. Dwayne DeFries, one of our alums, uh, in, in that spot as well. And there were a series of those focusing on the various disciplines. And you'll likely catch those uh, on local media, again, local cable, social media. If you want to check them out individually, though, they are posted on our website at www.floridatech.edu slash stands. Uh, and so that's a nice opportunity to check those out for us, if you will. Let us know what you think. Okay. I want to talk for just a moment about Florida Tech Connect. Launched this spring, the alumni office has this new online networking platform. It's free and it is exclusive for our alumni. It allows our alumni community to stay connected, to support each other through their careers, to find former classmates, share news and accomplishments, find a mentor, attend alumni events, a range of opportunities uh, that is involved in being part of Florida Tech Connect. We think it's a great resource that brings all alumni pieces, parts together in one place. Uh, Jillian is gonna be happy to answer questions about Florida Tech Connect at the conclusion of this afternoon's presentation, but we hope that you will take advantage of Florida Tech Connect and keep up with your former classmates and as well as what all is going on here at the university. I'm going to close by talking a bit about Florida Tech moving forward into the future. And I'm going to base this short closing piece of our time together by the three core values that President McKay and, and Dr. Carvalho and others are working to advance. Dr. McKay articulated these in his inauguration um, as president in 2016 for Florida Tech. What we are about as an institution going back to 1958 is first and foremost, research that benefits all of humankind. Being created as a night school for missile workers as they were known then in 1958 out at the Cape, uh, that's what we're all about. What can we do here on campus with research that, in, that really advances society as a whole? We take that very seriously. We're going to continue to take that very seriously. Education for a lifetime of success. When our students graduate, become a Panther alums here from Florida Tech, 
wherever they go to work. We want them to have the tools that they need to be successful, to be contributing members of society, to excel in their fields, and to bring new aspects of discovery to whatever it is, whatever the work is that they're doing. We have so many amazing success stories of Florida Tech alums. We're so proud of those. And we know that we're gonna have even more moving forward. And thirdly, Dr. McKay has articulated global citizenship for a better world. The, the world isn't getting smaller, it's getting closer as, as an old expression goes. Being a good global citizen involves being knowledgeable about other cultures, knowledgeable about other business practices in other parts of the world, because increasingly our students are called upon and we are all called upon to, to, uh, to act on a larger stage and to have those kinds of experiences in order to make contributions in bigger ways. And so good global citizenship to improve our world is also core. Uh, from a mechanical standpoint, we're very excited about the 21-22 academic year that will start in August. We're looking forward to a safe return to in-person instruction. We're looking forward to being able to, uh, to have some events. We're looking forward to being able to host more activities on campus and open up more to the public. What that exactly will look like and what kinds of guidelines we will have around all of that of course, is being developed even as we speak over the course of this summer. But uh, as Dr. McKay has said in his weekly COVID-19 address and his weekly campus update to faculty, staff, alumni, parents, uh, we feel like uh, the worst chunk of this is behind us as a campus community. We think that the steps that we have taken uh, have helped to set us in good stead moving forward. We wanna to continue to be safe but we also want to look very much forward in terms of what we need to do uh, as an educational institution. So we're very excited about that too. Uh, and we just ask for your continued support, your continued feedback and your continued involvement. It's been hard for us all to be con connected primarily electronically. Uh, it's taught us, taught me uh, a, great, a great many things, but that person to person in the same room kind of contact, you know, there really is no substitute for it. So being able to safely return to some of that coming up uh, is, is what we're looking forward to as well. And I have used up just about all of the time that Jillian said that I could have, otherwise she was gonna uh, come be upset with me. And I don't want Jillian to be upset with me. So thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, be with you this afternoon. I hope you'll have me back at some point. I'd be pleased to bring other information to you. And I'd also be pleased at this time to answer any questions that you may have. All right, so I, I did see a, a question in the chat, Wes, um, from Larry Pollock, who is the generous alumnus I mentioned earlier, who made the donation for our alumni terrace in the back. So, so thank you, Larry, for that. And thank you for, for always supporting us and attending events like this. Uh, he asked, will the Health Sciences Center have a BSL2 or higher laboratory space included in its design? That is a tremendously good question that I do not know the answer to. But let us let us find you an answer to that question. I don't have a breakdown of all of the specs uh, that we have, but we'll be happy to get that for you and share it with you. Good. Hello. Um, can you hear me okay, Julia? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, so it's been a while since I've been on the microphone. So yeah, all exciting news. Can't wait to get back to campus. It's been too long because of um, COVID. And I just wanted to congratulate Dr. McKay and all of the staff for the professionalism that has been shown during this whole pandemic thing. I think not only was the leadership very important in keeping those numbers particularly low, but I also want to commend the students because the bulk of the students are very scientifically minded and it's science that will get us out of this pandemic. So I think that's one reason why Florida Tech has excelled during this pandemic in keeping the infection rates low because students who are science minded know how viruses need a host and it, I'll just leave it at that. Um, good work. 
That's a great point, Larry. And, and thank you. That's very kind. We appreciate your support. The BSL laboratories, biosafety laboratory, I'm asking mainly because depending on what capabilities you have will foster more research opportunities for the university. So Rocky Johnson just put in the chat, yes, it does okay. have a BSL2 lab included. So Great. thank you, Rocky, for answering that question. Thank you, Rocky. We will crowdsource answers to some of these questions. <laughs> That'll be perfect. Can I jump in with one other question? And that is, um, is Florida Tech, have they taken a stand yet as far as requiring vaccinations for students and staff and um, faculty? Over. Thank you, Larry. Uh, we have taken a, a stand and we released our vaccine policy uh, earlier this last uh, spring semester after much careful consideration. We are strongly recommending vaccines. Uh, we have shared on our website uh, multiple ways, information of how students can get vaccines. Uh, we are not at this point in time requiring vaccines. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. Jarrett Clark uh, asked a question in the chat. He's, he asks, is anything going on with University Plaza and the old 7-Eleven? I see the 7-Eleven is empty now. Do you know? So the university does own that property. We do have some ideas for what we might like to put there, but I don't think anything that's ready for prime time quite yet. So I'd hate to start speculating and then, you know, we don't do it for whatever reason or we, a better idea comes along, what have you. So uh, stay tuned, that's, that's prime sort of Babcock Street frontage obviously for us. Uh, we do need uh, spaces for additional classrooms and academic activities. So, you know, once we get a little further on the other side of, of some of our COVID-19 related activities, uh, then we'll be able to, I think, make a, a better a public announcement about what we might be interested in doing there. All right, does anyone else have a question for Dr. Sumner? All right, we have one from Harad Ahmed. He asks, what is the expected inauguration date for the Health Sciences Center? Thank you for that question, Harad. So we are told by our contracting friends at, at Ivy's Construction that it will be principally complete by December of this year. And then so we are looking at what we can move in and have activities happening in, in uh, January, February, or sometime during the, the spring semester 22 timeframe. Um, we can't quite commit to that fully yet. Uh, it's, it's still a ways to December. Uh, in terms of what needs to be completed. But it, it's easy to say, I think, that in next year that we will be in that building at some point and, and we will uh, look forward to having a, a dedication ceremony, uh, maybe even a, a series of events. We've got some events to make up for, I think, over the past 16 months that we haven't had. So why not roll a bunch of them into uh, celebrating the Health Sciences Research Center. So look for being able to physically be in that building next year. Awesome, that's so exciting. So Edgar asked about um, research expenditures. Do we have Florida Tech's research expenditure numbers for the last fiscal year? You know, I apologize. I don't have those research expenditures numbers uh, with me. Uh, I know that overall, um, we uh, you know, have continued to do research even during COVID-19. Our, uh, our research faculty and our students who were partnering with them had to do some things uh, from a distance standpoint, had to do some things electronically collaborating with folks at other institutions. Um, but you know, as we rev back up into August, we're going to be looking at being able to do some new and exciting things in research as we can physically have more people in the same room together. The next question comes from Carol Ann. She asks, Where, will our wonderful football team return? Oh, you know, that uh, Dr. McKay would share has been one of his hardest uh, decisions uh, as president uh, with the um, with the um, retirement, if you will, of the football program from Florida Tech. Um, you know, the fact that that program um, did not enjoy all of the support, that it would have been great if it, if it had, 
It takes away nothing from the dedication, the hard work, the commitment of our coaches who were part of that program and the hundred students uh, who on any given year were a part mm -hmm. of that program. So at this point in time, no, there are no plans to resume football. Uh, and when we're marching forward with focusing our resources on some other activities that are, are more in line, if you will, with our functioning as a STEM university. Thank you, Wes. Um, I also wanted to say that um, we have decided to shift our homecoming dates to the spring um, so that it's, it's gonna be better weather for everyone to be outside and participate in various activities and also be more appealing for our alumni who live around the country and around the world to visit Florida because that is the best time of year to visit. The weather is beautiful. And, um, you know, we weren't able to have homecoming in 2020. Uh, we had rescheduled for spring 2021 and, you know, it was pre-vaccine, we weren't quite ready to do that. And so we are thrilled to announce that our next homecoming will be March 24th through the 26th of 2022. So look forward to that next spring and we will be sending you all the details um, within the next couple of months. So that's very exciting. Yes, that'll be a lot of fun, hopefully. Uh, folks will be able to join us for all of the festivities. And um, Bino Campanini, who is my boss, the Senior Vice President of Student Life and Alumni Affairs, he's on the call and he wanted to just uh, say hello real quick, Bino, if, you, if you're if you ready. Hey, yeah, hey everybody, great to see you. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm just here, I'm supervising, making sure Jillian's doing what I pay her for. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, now, I do want to say real quickly, thanks for joining the call. jillian uh, has been doing these alumni virtual events throughout the period of this uh, COVID-19 that we've been experiencing. She's done a great job. Um, I, I don't know how many you've done now, Gillian, maybe 15, 20 of these. Now, this is well attended, but apparently what she tells me is the ones that involve wine and chocolates are the ones that are attended the most. So I don't know if any of you have been attending some of those events, but um, they sound like they're the better ones. I should have maybe jumped to one of those, but um, we really do appreciate you guys getting involved. As Wes said, our new al alumni center is awesome. Um, we are really looking forward to having alumni there. Again, thank you, Larry, for your support. We're gonna have a beautiful terrace out the back as well. We've got a great um, meeting room that alumni can come and join and utilize. So it's a great addition to the campus. Um, as Larry mentioned, uh, I was, uh, I've been had the privilege of heading up our PRT, our pandemic response team. And as he mentioned, our students have really what made it a success. Um, our students have been um, unbelievable during this period, not only following the protocols, but just in their general reaction to what has been a very tough and prolonged period for any students who've had to you know be um, denied the true uh, campus experience so a lot of support from our campus from our faculty from our staff but also from our alumni as well so we certainly appreciate all of the alumni have shown support as well and so as you can see from this um, presentation Wes gave you there's a lot going on at Florida Tech um, even though this, this year has probably been tough for every university around the country We've actually come through this really well. We've had a, uh, what would, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say a great year, but it's been a very good year. And um, if you would have asked us back in March, uh, would have sat me and Wes and Dr. McKay and Dr. Carvalho and the leadership team and said, were well, we going to be in the position we are today? We probably would have never dreamt that we were. It was, it was looking very bleak and um, we've actually come through it very well. And that really is down to our faculty and our staff and our student body really um, uh, unifying behind a common cause here on campus. So we're really proud of everybody. And of course, we're hoping that um, in the coming months, we can start getting back out and start doing some alum alumni visits. Uh, I think Gillian's already ready scheduling some stuff in September, October, November. We're going to start here in Florida to, to begin with, because as everyone knows, Florida's the best state. We're open, baby, you know? So we're going to start here first and then work our way around the country and hopefully uh, get a chance to visit with all our great alumni in the United States. And hopefully next year we'll start doing some international travel as well. So anyway, I don't want to keep you any longer. I just wanted to say thank you, Wes, for that overview. We certainly appreciate you um, taking time out your schedule to do that and um, appreciate everyone who's joined the call. I recognize many of you out there and I appreciate you being involved and look forward to seeing you in the future. And as always, go Panthers. Thank you. 
All right. So I think on, on that note, we will say goodbye for today. Um, but I want to thank everyone again uh, for joining us and keep a lookout for our next Lunch and Learn lecture online. It's going to be about sharks from Dr. Daly Engel, who heads our shark conservation lab on campus. So still going to be some fun and engaging virtual events coming your way. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks, Wes. Bye. And thank you, Bino. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day.